Good afternoon. It's Tuesday the 18th of May. I'm back in the reading nook taking advantage of a break from um, the rain showers we've had. So it's right now it's bright and it's warm and of course I've got a nice hot cup of tea and a big pile of parcels to unbox which have built up over the course of the inclement weather we've had in the past couple of weeks or so. So let's get started and I'm going to delve into a parcel I have already opened uh, but not yet fully explored. So uh, pulling this open uh, I have already pulled out uh, Mysteries of the World, uh, the Scion Companion. Uh, so that's for Scion 2nd edition, it's from Onyx Path Publishing. I've already done an unboxing on that one. So next down in the pile is, let's have a look. Um, uh, is this Yuckman's Guide to Gelsbad, a Scarred Land source book for 5th edition role playing? Uh, so let's, let's have a look at this. Um, again, Onyx Path Publishing, um, Scarred Lands is the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition setting. Originally, it was from 3rd, it was for 3rd edition, uh, but it's being updated. Um, for the new edition, I say new edition, Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition has been with us for um, sort of five or six years now, so uh, nothing new about 5th edition at the moment. So, uh, Yudman's Guide to Gelsbad. Pay heed to the wisdom of Yudman the Sage. A century and a half after the Divine War, the Titans lay defeated and scattered across Skarn and beyond. As the people of Gelsbad walked at work to build a new world on the war-torn remnants of a fallen paradise, new heroes rise and new threats emerge. Yudman the Sage brings an overview of the new heroes and villains as well as the tools they use to rise to power. A legend, uh, sorry, a land where legends walk. Drawing enthusiastically on Greek mythology, the revised and reimagined Skarn lands nonetheless retains its place as a modern fantasy role-playing setting. This is a world shaped by gods and monsters, and only the greatest of heroes can expect to be counted amongst them. At uh, the most populous continent of Skarn, Gelsbad pays host to a vast, unexplored regions, hides unsolved riddles from ancient cultures and taunts adventures, with the promise of undiscovered riches hidden among the ruins of older civilizations. Yet the myths of the Scarred Lands are relatively recent events. The effects of the Titans' War still ripple through the world, and the heroines and heroines of many of these stories are part of living memory, if not alive themselves. Yuckman's Guide to Gelsbad contains 21 new social backgrounds expanding the sex and society, uh, societies introduced in the Scarred Lands Player's Guide, 23 new subclasses, with each base class representative, uh, 6 new races, and a revised Hollow Legionnaire. New spells, true, true rituals, magic items, and more. So, yeah, this is part, uh, part, part, published by um, uh, Onyx Path Publishing. Um, it's uh, quite a nicely, basically, nice, colourful layout. A little bit difficult to read that, that text. I mean, but then again, uh, cursive text, handwriting text, always done as a font, uh, generally is. Um, but. Um, Automatically, in chapter one, uh, we delved into backgrounds. Adventurers are not born in a vacuum. There are a number of societies on Gelsbad that provide training and motivation for adventurers. And that's always a good thing, because essentially, you know, you've rolled up a character and you've the first thing, you know, and you've started a campaign, uh, and the first thing your players want to do, want to know is, why am I doing this? Or, of course, if they're playing RuneQuest or Glorantha, the first thing they want to know is, what year is it? Um, but this provides backgrounds for the Scarred Land setting. So we have things like the Arcane Societies of the Penumbra, Penumbral Pentagon, um, the Phylacterial Cult, the Society of Immortals, and so on. Um, so each one comes with a feature. So the Penumbral Pentagon, um, Pentagon, you're linked to the Planar Shadow in ways that no one but your brothers and sisters could ever understood. You instinctively know that when you see another creature native to the Planar Shadow of um, Solarisian to descent or who has been inducted into the Penumbral Pentagon, although you do not know which, okay, you know two contacts from the from the organisation, though if you're a deserter they may need, may need convincing not to kill you. <laughs> um, and it does this for um, uh, not just arcane societies but criminal societies. Um, there, um, uh, such um, death societies, um, at, uh, um, devotional societies, mercantile societies, um, 
military societies uh, over and over. You've numerous options here uh, for um, character backgrounds, and of course, many of these, of course, would if sort of the elements of them could easily be adapted to the work, the setting of your choice. But obviously, this is for the scarred lands. Political societies, uh, and then we come on to the classes, uh, and we have uh, essentially. Um, to, this is a list of archetypes, paths, and disciplines expands upon those presented in Chapter 3 of the Scotland's Player's Guide. Um, so we have the Path of the Steps Archer. Um, this is the primal path practiced by bar barbarians across Gelspad. And so we're talking sort of like the, 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 the Mongol horde with their boat with, with the bow um, on horseback. Um, and then we have the Bard and the College of Need the Needles. Uh, ancient tradition on Gelsbad, but to specialise in magical to you study um, the teachings of the College of uh, Needles. Again, nice illustration there of just some of the tattoos worked, and you can imagine just how complex they can get. It's obviously, um, uh, as um, you know, tattoos can be quite complex themselves. Uh, the gods of Skarn give their faithful followers with a number of domains, not all peaceful or pleasant. So we have the divine domain, uh, venom domain, which is great for, essentially for. Um, wor uh, rat like uh, worship, um, worshippers or rat worships of a rat queen or king or something like that. Um, so we've got a nice illustration of a creature that would uh, uh, follow that domain. Uh, Druid, the circle of blood. Um, essentially, Druids of the circle learn to draw on that power through acts of sacrifice. And um, Druidic power is not always. Well, it's not always, uh, it, there is a dark side to nature and sometimes the druids can, some of the power source, the sources of power from druids can, for druids can reflect that and this is one of them. Um, but, uh, with the fighter, the dragon knight, uh, martial archetype, gore guard and, and so on. They're just interesting elements which again add flavour and detail to your character. You know, what's a gore guard? Um, you know, essentially, um, the Gore Guard serves in forces uh, and guided in Fang Quarry. Um, at night, they fight in gruesome pits for coin and glory. At, um, uh, City of Teeth is known for its great deposits of Fang's Tooth at the Ore. Um, the Gore Guard were created when a particularly rich vein was cut open and began to bleed the Titan's blood. The blood was distilled and used in deadly experiments, eventually creating the Gore Guard, warriors who grow to resemble, resemble one of Gorok's fat wings. And uh, essentially, you gain basically um, you, you gain Gorex gnashes, have great basically thicker teeth, and corpulence. Um, you gain uh, for the monk. There is the way of the sacred chain. Um, chain uh, basically chain um, devices are always so cinematic and fun to use. You basically you can imagine using them yourself. And it, it, um, again, we have um, so um, you know, there's an example illustration. And it does this. So we've got options for the paladin, the the, 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 the thorned purifier, uh, rangers, um, and so on. A couple of archetypes: hunt master and um, the black thorn archetype. I don't want to delve too much into these. Obviously, roguish archetypes: blood sea pirate, envoy. Um, so on, Master of the Scaled is it, it basically one of the um, the Guild of the Scaled is a, is a thieves guild. And when we come to the Sorcerer, and we have um, again uh, something nice. I always like something basically something where you can play a serpent man, that's always uh, fun. Um, Warlock, uh, Mother of Serpents, again, nice dark illustration there. So basically plenty of flavour in these right down to wizard and so on. So plenty of new options for each of the, char the, the characters in the um, basic basic D&D, so in, in the core Dungeons & Dragons rules. Um, we come on to races, so we have wood dwarves, um, half elves, and basically different takes upon this. So then you've got a um, wood dwarf, uh, basically a forest dwelling dwarf, rather than one who run, uh, who lives underground, or whether in a hill or, or the mountains. So it's a nice little inversion of sort of like the traditions. Um, then the scarred lands version of the orcs, half orcs there. And basically, um, new version of the hollow legionnaire. Again, this is visiting and basically you don't have the. Um, uh, 
uh, I don't actually, uh, I don't actually have, I haven't looked at the player's guide for this. I will hopefully at one point, even a minor tour. Um, again, I remember this, bit, this is drawing upon Greek myths. So obviously, the minor tour is, is, is a classic figure from Greek myths, so making it playable makes sense. Uh, sc scrag and uh, Triton. Um, again, all playable races that mean different interesting things you can do. And then you've got equipment and magical items, um, like basically like practicing with blood sea alchemy, uh, magical items such as a bone dagger or um, at, uh, the um, forsaken elf blade and so on. Uh, mandolin, mandolin and mandolin manipulation. Uh, it's, a, it's a great device. You know, basically you play that three times a day, charm person once a day. Um, enthrall and suggestion, uh, yeah. Um, and he does carry a warning here. So the word of the scarred lands is heavily inspired by Greek mythology. In drawing from that inspiration, some of the pro pro problematic and potentially triggering aspects of these stories have made their way into the mythology of Scarn, specifically with regard to the issues of sexual violence and the gods. In world, this has had the effect that religions of all alignments generally view sexual violence as blasphemous and worthy of the harshest punishments for the perpetrator. In the real world, however, consent, awareness and discussion of boundaries in relation to players' triggers is essential to developing the, the, the positive gaming experience. So yeah, I, that's a nice touch, a nice inclusion, and, and it shows awareness of basically the source material and some of the issues attached to it. Um, we have a whole list of new spells for the Bard, the Cleric, the Druid, um, you know, so it's actually a table of them there. Nice up front about that, then you've got this actually good list there. Um, and that, that's both the bar cleric and druid and it does the same for um the other spell class and, uh, casting classes over on the next page um so uh there's got to be a th uh, there's got to be about 30 or 40 different new spells there um so uh in some ways this is a guide for the player wanting new to create a new character but it also means that the referee can create um, new and interesting uh, NPCs um, and the appendix lastly just explores some of the um, at, uh, essentially playable race the peoples of the scarred lands and uh, ties them into the system resource reference document which is what underlies fifth edition um, so uh, basically just quickly goes through them uh, represents them for um, reference uh, basic versions of them for the Scarred Lands. So this is Yugman's Guide to Galsbad and essentially this is, um, I said it comes back to sort of the, the, not quite the equivalent of the player's handbook for the setting but, um, but essentially something that adds to it and then you use it in conjunction with the player's handbook for the core game itself. So nicely produced, lots of interesting things that you, you, you probably will want to, you know, if you're going to play in the setting you want to try playing and the referee wants to use as NPCs. So, um, thanks again for watching another unboxing in the Nook. If you've enjoyed this, please do click the like button down below. Uh, if you have any comments or feedback, do take the time to read those. Uh, and lastly, if you want to be alerted to yet yeah, more unboxings in the Nook and see me here with a nice hot cup of tea, an interesting game to unpackage and talk about for 10 minutes, please do subscribe. Once again, Thanks for watching, I'll be back again soon with another unboxing in the nook.